Causal relationships are a fundamental feature of reality. Some causal relationships seem fairly straightforward. I will my arm to go up, and it goes up. I push on the door, and it closes. Other causal relationships occur within the context of complex social, economic, or political systems and can seem beyond the scope of our full understanding. Think, for example, about trying to understand all of the effects of a change in tax policy. Yet other causal relationships have profound implications for our very survival. Think about understanding the causes and cures of diseases or the impacts that humans are having on the biosphere. Our goal in this chapter is to learn some techniques for being able to identify causal relationships. Before we turn to those, however, we have to understand some basic terminology, beginning with cause and effect. Now the way that we're going to understand these terms, a cause will be an event or state of affairs that brings about or helps to bring about an effect. An effect then will be an event or a state of affairs that is brought about by a cause or set of causes. Causal relationships then have to do with relationships between events and states of affairs. Very frequently, we'll refer to causes and effects in terms of variables. Within a causal relationship, a cause or a set of causes will be called the independent variable, while the effect is called the dependent variable. So if pressing a button causes a bell to ring, then pressing the button is the independent variable. It was not brought about by anything within the causal relationship in question, while the bell ringing is the dependent variable. Its occurrence depends on the independent variable. Very often, cause and effect relationships are also understood in terms of necessary and sufficient conditions. Now, if a cause is a necessary condition for an effect, then the effect cannot occur without the cause. Thus, if the effect occurs, then the cause must be there. Oxygen, for example, is a necessary condition for fire. This means that you cannot have fire without oxygen. Now to say that a cause is a sufficient condition for an effect is to say that the cause cannot occur without the effect. As an example, intentionally setting a fire in the library is sufficient to get expelled from the university. However, it's not necessary. There can be other ways you can get expelled. Of course, effects are not always brought about by single causes. A lot of times, causes work together to bring about an effect, in which case we say that those causes are jointly sufficient for the effect. In certain other cases, causes can be both necessary and sufficient for an effect. If this is the case, then neither the cause nor the effect can occur in the absence of the other. For example, the only way to kill a zombie is to destroy its brain, so destroying its brain is necessary for killing it. Furthermore, if you do destroy its brain, then it will die, so destroying its brain is also sufficient. When we're testing for causal relationships, then, we're testing to see whether causes are necessary, sufficient, or necessary and sufficient to bring about an effect. Starting in the next section, we're going to begin looking at some methods that we can use to test for causal relationships.